do you anticipate, do you worry about pressures from outside sources, from society, from politicians, from money sources? I both worry about it and want it. Like, you know, to the point of we're in this bubble and we shouldn't make all these decisions. Like we want society to have a huge degree of input here. That is pressure in some point, in some way. Well, there's a, you know, that's what like uh, to some degree, uh, Twitter files have re revealed that there was uh, pressure from different organizations. You can see in the pandemic where the CDC or some other uh, government organization might put pressure on, you know what, uh, we're not really sure what's true, but it's very unsafe to have these kinds of nuanced conversations now. So let's censor all topics. So and you get a lot of those emails, like, you know, um, emails, all different kinds of people reaching out at different places to put subtle indirect pressure, uh, direct pressure, financial, political pressure, all that kind of stuff. Like, how do you survive that? How do you, um, how much do you worry about that? If GPT continues to get more and more uh, intelligent and a source of information and knowledge for human civilization. I think there's like a lot of like quirks about me that make me not a great CEO for OpenAI, but a thing in the positive column is I think I am relatively good at not being affected by pressure for the sake of pressure. By the way, beautiful statement of humility, but I have to ask, what's in, what's in the negative column? Oh, I mean. <laughs> Too long a list? No, 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 no I'm trying, what, what's a good one? <laughs> I mean, I think I'm not a great like spokesperson for the AI movement, I'll say that. I think there could be like a more like, there could be someone who enjoyed it more, there could be someone who's like much more charismatic, there could be someone who like, connects better, I think, with people than I, I do. I'm with Chomsky on this. I think charisma is a dangerous thing. <laughs> I think I think uh, flaws in flaws in communication style, I think, is a feature, not a bug in general, at least for humans, at least for humans in power. I think I have like more serious problems than that one. Um, I think I'm like pretty disconnected from like the reality of life for most people and trying to really not just like empathize with but internalize what the impact on people that agi is going to have i probably like feel that less than other people would that's really well put and you said like you're going to travel across the world to yeah i'm excited to, to empathize with different users not to empathize just to like I want to just like buy our users, our developers, our users a drink and say like, tell us what you'd like to change. And I think one of the things we are not good, as good at as a company as I would like, is to be a really user-centric company. And I feel like by the time it gets filtered to me, it's like totally meaningless. Mm -hmm. So I really just want to go talk to a lot of our users in very different contexts. But you, like you said, a drink in person, because I, mean, I, I haven't actually found the right words for it, but I, I was I was a little afraid with the programming mm, emotionally yeah. i i don't think it makes any sense there is a real limbic response there gpt makes me nervous about the future not in an ai safety way but like what am I change do? yeah change. Ch change and like there's a nervousness about change and more nervous than excited if i take away the fact that i'm an ai person and just a programmer yeah more excited, but still nervous. Like, yeah, nervous in brief moments, especially when sleep deprived, but people, there's a nervousness there. <laughs> people who say they're not nervous, I, I, it's hard for me to believe. But you're right, it's excited. It's ner nervous for change. Nervous whenever there's significant, exciting kind of change. Um, you know, I've recently started using, um, I've been an Emacs person for a very long time and I switched to VS Code as a- Or Copilot? Uh, that was one of the big cool uh, reasons because like this is where a lot of active development of course you could probably do uh copilot inside um emacs i mean i'm sure i'm sure yes code is also pretty good yeah there's a lot of like little little things and and big things that are just really good about vs code so i was and i've been i can happily report and all the vim people are just going nuts but I, i'm very happy it was a very happy decision That's it. but there was a lot of uncertainty there's a lot of nervousness about it. There's fear and so on um, about taking that leap. And that's obviously a tiny leap. 
Um, but even just the leap to actively using Copilot, like uh, using a mm. uh, generation of code, uh, it m makes you nervous, but ultimately your my life is much better as a, as a programmer. Purely as a programmer, a pr programmer of little things and big things uh, is much better. But there's a nervousness, and I think a lot of people will experience that, experience that, and you will experience that by talking to them. And I don't know what we do with that. Um, how we comfort people in in the in the face of this uncertainty, and you're getting more nervous the more you use it, not less. Yes, I, I would have to say yes because I get better at using it. Mm -hmm. So yeah, actually, the learning curve is quite steep. Yeah, and and then there's moments when you're like, oh, it generates a function beautifully. And you sit back, both proud like a parent, but almost like proud like and scared that this thing will be much smarter than than me. Mm -hmm. Like bo both pride and uh, sadness, almost like a melancholy feeling, but ultimately joy, I think, yeah.